Hello, welcome to Breaking It All Down. I'm Count Zero. I'd like to apologize for taking so long to get at, to this video game review that I promised for, well, several weeks or more. I already mentioned the craziness that has been my life in my Comoricon vlog. But now it is time to get to something that is fun. Really well and truly fun. And Conan the Barbarian will tell you that what is good, as lo what is good in life is to crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and hear the lamentations of their women. Well, crushing your enemies is part right. What's really fun is punching Nazis in the face. And that leads me to the game that I'm reviewing today. The most recent Nazi face-punching simulator to come out, oh, I believe the most recent, and that is The Saboteur. The game follows Sean Devlin, Irish race car driver and mechanic who knows his way around booze, fast cars, and equally fast women as he assists the French resistance in forcing the Nazi occupation out of Paris and its environs. Devlin is based on a real member of the Special Operations Executive, an Allied Special Ops group which helped out the French resistance, named William Grover Williams, who had a similar background to Devlin, except that he was English. I'm assuming the developers were operating under the assumption that Americans would find it more plausible that an Irishman would know his way around explosives than an Englishman would. Anyway, this is an open world game, so the game uses a mix of narrative missions with some open world havoc. However, unlike other open world games, this game does give you a lot of objective-based havoc to do. Throughout the map, there are various Nazi sniper towers, propaganda speakers, fuel depots, checkpoints, and other wonderful things to blow up. By blowing these things up and completing missions, you can loosen the fascist grip on Paris. I'm not going to go into the story much more than this, as getting into the story of an open world game is a mess at the best of times. The more side missions and more additional characters the game adds, the harder it gets to really dissect the story and put things together into a coherent fashion for purposes of a review anyway. Ultimately though, the saboteur owes a lot to pulp novels and comics of the 1920s, 30s, and 40s, particularly the 30s and 40s. It puts some thought into the narrative in the sense of presenting an exciting story, but what it doesn't do is it doesn't insult your intelligence. It presents a version of Nazi-occupied Europe that meshes with the vision we get from the Indiana Jones films and the works of fiction that inspired them, but without getting into the weird science and occult crazy forms of the Nazis in favor of something conventional but tonally fitting that story. Indeed, there was a whole subgenre of the pulps for a time, basically being about two-fisted race car drivers and similar sorts of things, and Devlin totally fits that archetype. Oh, and as one other tangent, I do want to give props to Pandemic for having the protagonist not be American. Yes, I just gave him some flack for changing him from being English to Irish, but the key is, most games of this type will put an American protagonist in the game because it's being made for an American audience, and it gives the impression of discounting the contributions that countries in Europe gave to the Second World War. Indeed, for that matter, by having the main character of the game be Irish, a country that was neutral for large portions of the war, at least toward the beginning, it adds an undercurrent of, that the main character is fighting not for his country, because his country is currently staying out of it, but because he feels it's the right thing to do. The saboteur uses an interesting visual style. Areas under Nazi control are depicted in black and white, with small bits of spot color, usually red, for Nazi iconography like banners and armbands and that sort of thing. Sort of like Frank Miller's Sin City. However, as you free areas of the city, things will change to full, bright, vibrant color. Posters will change from Nazi propaganda to something more appealing, and getting spotted, it becomes less likely to lead to a massive, gigantic car chase. The game's controls are pretty good. Cars drive like boats, but to be fair, that's kind of somewhat accurate to the period. You also don't take a lot of damage in combat, so it's advisable to use a certain degree of stealth to avoid being overwhelmed. If you do get in a firefight, 
The game does have a snap to cover option, which frankly, there really isn't a reason not to include that in games anymore. The Saboteur also lets players get their building scaling on, though it doesn't go as full-on parkour as the Assassin's Creed games do. This gives the player a lot of choices about how they want to approach mission objectives, and for that matter, also approach the game's side missions. Speaking of which, one of the problems that open world games which aren't made by Rockstar have is a dearth of things to do when you're not going on the storyline missions. Fortunately, the Saboteur does not have this problem. As mentioned earlier, this game has a massive number of various things to blow up and otherwise just do to loosen the Nazis' grip on Paris. So if you want to take a break from the story missions and do something else, or you want to stop and do a bunch of other stuff while on your way to a quest giver, there are plenty of options for that. Frankly, for Pandemic's last title before they close their doors, this is really a well-done game. It's fun, it's great if you're a fan of pulps and the serials and this era of sort of American entertainment, less European, but mainly American entertainment of the action hero, the your particularly the like your sort of race car driver, action hero kind of thing, the kind of character that Devlin is. He doesn't exist that much anymore, and it's nice seeing him done very well in this game. It it's, captures that pulp spirit amazingly well, and if you like that sort of pulp sensibility without having any of the unpleasant racist overtones from the original books, or any of the unpleasant borderline misogynist overtones from some of the earlier books, this is really a game which I think you'd enjoy. Honestly, this game makes me wish Pandemic had been around longer, because this reminded me of what I liked about the um, first Mercenaries game in particular. I hope that the people who made this game make something else like this in the future. They may start a new studio or something. This is, honestly, probably one of the best open-world action games of all time. I put, but I put this in my top five, which is a topic for another video. And speaking of other videos, next week, expect something slightly different than what you normally get for my non-video game weeks. I'm just going to leave that to your imagination. So, until next time... Thank you very much for watching.